fabulous fiber friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen and I am your host. Thank you so much to my returning subscribers, thank you to my new subscribers, and thank you to any of you just checking me out for the first time. Today I'm going to first uh, give you a quick tour of another yarn store that I visited while I was in Wisconsin. The store is called Kitch, like Stitch, but K-N-I-T-C-H. It is located in Delafield, Wisconsin, in Waukesha County, which is next to Milwaukee County. Ah, hold on. Hubby just called. He got his test results from his wellness physical, and he's 100%. That's great news. Um, I was in Wisconsin recently and visited Kitch Yarn Store, run by Mary and Susan, and they are actually a wonderful complement to each other. Mary is uh, more earth tones in, you know, she prefers more subtle colors and earth tones, which are gorgeous, but you guys know me, I like me some color, and Susan is the dyer, she's an indie dyer, and she loves color, which is funny, because if you, when I met her, I thought I would find sort of a flamboyant looking person, and uh, she was very subdued, in, in her own attire, or maybe it was just that day. Both ladies are lovely. They're very, very lovely. And so I'll give you a quick tour of the studio, and then I wanna show you some of the goodies that I bought because... Hey guys, I am in Delafield, Wisconsin, and I am going to this very cute, charming yarn shop here. Let's take a look. spotted it was an Andrea Maori uh, shift out in the wild so at the niche yarn store I saw the the shift the the cowl and they had used I was actually I apologize I don't know if it was Susan's hand dyed yarn or another local hand dyed yarn from East Coast to West Coast all of us knitters and crocheters and makers and weavers everybody's on trend so I couldn't leave the store without buying yet more teal or bluish green yarns. And Susan, as a dyer, she has soft blanks and beautiful, beautiful colored yarns. So here are some of my goodies. Susan goes by, her indie dyer name is called Fairy Yarn Mother. Here's the hand spun yarn I picked up. Look at how much, look at this cake. It's a huge cake. It is, this is a DK weight yarn. It is Merino Silk, which I happen to love Merino Silk blend. And uh, let me see how many yards, 428.8 yards. But I'm so excited about this. So I'm excited to use this. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe I could make another uh, Shelly Summer Top by Nancy 
with getting pearly with it. That might, uh, because I don't have enough to make a full sweater. Although, oh my God, but you know what? I've also have on my plans, another project that I'm waiting to cast on is the Soldatna. I know I'm behind the times, but I, as much as I love trending, I like to, you know, I like to go against the trends, go against the grain. I may, uh, so maybe I'll use that, the, uh, so maybe I'll use this in my in the Soldatna. Mm -hmm. Not only does Susan dye yarn, merino silk, but she also does, what would you call this, like a fabric, ribbon fabric? Let me show you. It's sort of a knit collage, right, type of yarn. Let's read. Oh, actually, it is called Sari Silk Ribbon. 100% Sari Silk Ribbon. And Susan hand dyed this, this too. Love the colors. Oh my God, you guys, it kind of goes with this shirt I'm wearing. Love my blues and teals. You guys, the most exciting purchase. Oh my God, OMG, you guys. Are these little, look at these guys. <laughs> look at that. So, I saw this, I couldn't resist, right? We've got purples, we've got green and blue. Look at that. This is by, uh, I guess it's another local artisan, local to Wisconsin. You know, and I looked her up, Thorn Tree Pass. I looked her up and I could only find her on Facebook. I will put the information below. And I messaged her to get a better sense of who she is and you know how much she's working and putting out there uh, and I haven't heard back so you know it's summer perhaps she's on vacation but this dyer love these I have no idea what I'm going to do with them I think I'm gonna end up having to felt no what is it called needle felting I will have to make some kind of cardigan I should talk to Amanda Solomon I'll make some sort of cardigan I guess or sweater and have to incorporate them in somehow or I could make a hat right make it a little little ponytail for the for the hat <gasps> that, that might be interesting so you guys what should I do with these what should I do with these they are so beautiful let me show you again love 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 these they are just so beautiful and I'll show you the ca the card wait let me see if I can get it to focus So these are available at Niche in Delafield, so at the Niche Yarn Store. Niche carries a huge selection of all types of yarns. They have a lot of indie dyers, local to Wisconsin and from around the country. Um, they have a lot of you know, all, all price ranges, so there's something for everyone. There are, they do weaving, they do, what does she call it, hook punching, um, needle, needle punch? They hold classes for that. They do needle punch, they do weaving, they do spinning, they do knitting, they do crochet, they do it all there. And as you saw from the video, they have a large space for teaching and learning and socializing. It's a great store. There's a coffee shop across the street. It's a very charming street in Delafield. It's very cute. My husband, when we drove in, he said, oh my God, this is like one of those picture perfect uh, like in a movie set, you know, you drive in and it's this quaint, charming uh, little town or village, and and it was, it was very pretty. Um, and so, if you live in the area or are visiting, go check it out. So now it's time, I think, for a costume change so that we can talk about finished objects. <laughs> this is called the Cityscape Tank by Lisa K. Ross. Here it is, Cityscape, Cityscape Tank, right there. You know, my printer is starting to break down, I think, <laughs> or I'm going to break down. I will finally have to invest in a color printer. I know, they're not expensive. It's the ink that's expensive, but that's the problem, right? You guys, we bu you buy an inexpensive printer and you spend a fortune on ink. 
Let me tell you about this wonderful pattern. It is knit in the round, but I chose to knit it flat. Why? Because I know my gauge is very different. Oh, well, let me rephrase that. It's knit in the round up to the underarms, and then this part is knit flat the, the, uh, from the underarms up. You separate and knit separately, um, flat. My gauge tends to be very, I guess all of us, it tends to be very different, the gauge between knitting in the round and knitting flat. Since I like to seam, isn't that crazy? But I, I do, I, don't, I like seaming. I decided to knit the entire garment flat. And I think my math, um, I didn't really do much math. I just sort of, you know, I looked at the number of cast on stitches and kind of figured out where the, I'm going to insert more pictures so you can see the side of the garment better. Uh, but there's a little design in there that runs from the waist and you decrease at some point in towards the underarm. And I think mine looks a little more narrow at the beginning, so I think I probably should have added a couple more stitches. Not added the stitches, but I should have started that pattern a few more stitches more than I did, but it's not a big deal. And it's a super easy pattern, fast easy pattern, DK weight yarn. The yarn I used here is from Knit Stitch. I will put all the information below. Oh, for those of you that are new, here's what I do. My crazy notes, those of you that have been with me know that I do this. I write down, I've got the name of the pattern, the yarn I've used, the cast on stitches, whatever I'm doing. And I keep these notes because, as many of you know, I like to knit patterns several times and I tweak them each time I make them. And that way I feel like I get different garments. I know some people don't like to do that, but then I think about think about the clothes that we buy in the store, right? The ready to wear. Don't we tend to buy a lot of the same style of garment to you know that meets our own taste? And so it's kind of like that with knitting. If I really like a pattern, and especially when it's easy, you can just whip it together in you know a few days. And that, that was this pattern. So I was able to do it quickly. It's DK, so it knits up quickly. I changed the neckline a little bit. I wanted to have an I-cord neckline. Actually, I wanted to try it because I have another garment that I'm working on, which I will show you in Works in Progress, and it's been sitting, waiting for me to do the sleeves for a long time, but I got so excited about getting pearly with it a couple of her cows that I put my other garment aside and it's more for winter so I thought oh, I can do my sleeves at another time. The point was that I wanted to try the I-cord bind off. Well it's actually it's not a bind off it was I guess you'd call it an applied bind off because you bind off for your neckline and then I went back in and would have to pick up one stitch each you know each time you're doing your I-cord uh, knitting. And that turned out well, and I did the same thing around the sleeves and the hem. The, the rest of the garment I did well. <laughs> I shouldn't say I followed the pattern because I didn't, did I? I, did, I, I mean, I did, except I did it in pieces instead of in the round. But then I just slightly changed, um, you know, the neckline to an I-cord neckline. The pattern, you guys, is so easy. You really should try it. It is a great, easy pattern, and there are... Uh, Many, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, there are seven sizes available. And you can make this pattern, you can see, again, I'll show, I'll insert more pictures. But here it is, here's the front and the back, the back, the front. And you can make it crop if you want, or a little longer. I, because I've mentioned before, I have a short waist, so even though I love the look of crop tops, they make me look even shorter in the waist, which I would like to avoid. Uh, so I will add a couple inches. So it's still sort of crop, not quite crop, but it's a little longer than crop, but not totally crop because then I would look like I have no waist at all. That is my, that is my cityscape tank. I love this. It's so comfy cozy. It's great. Did you, you guys know, you know what else? I have been resisting. Ladies, 
I don't know about you men, but ladies, when we get to a certain age, we don't always want to show our arms, right? There's things that happen that sometimes we're less than comfortable with. And I know we shouldn't let it bother us and just, you know, be who you are and accept it and all of that. But that said, since I have been knitting these and it is so hot in Southern California, I started doing my weights again and really trying to get my shoulders and arms in shape. But I have some pulled muscle that I've had in my neck for many years and I just can't get rid of it. And it's okay if I don't do upper body weights. But then I thought, oh my God, my arms, my husband calls them chicken arms. I have chicken arms. They're long. I have very long arms and they're thin. And so I look like a chicken, a chicken, I guess. I don't know. A chicken doesn't have chicken arms. I would need feathers. So I've been doing, I've been doing my weight so I, I can, uh, I feel a little better about wearing, uh, going bare naked on my arms. You can wear this with skirt, with pants, with jeans, with shorts, with anything. And so I think it's a very versatile piece. So check it out. The Cityscape Tank. Okay, you guys, I have to change into my next outfit. I'm back. Many of you are knitting along with Getting Pearly With It, Nancy from Getting Pearly With It. You're knitting along the Shelly Summer Top. I have made two are completed and one I'm waiting because I decided to use a yarn and I only had one skein and I really, so I'm waiting to pick up the other skein of yarn soon. Those of you participating in the Shelly Summer Top Cal know what a great knit this is. It's super fast, super easy. This version, you'll see from the pictures inserted above, I, or to the side, should I do them to the side? Right, left, up, down, right, left. This version, which I knit up first, I changed slightly. There was one row um, that should all be purled. I decided not to do that. I wanted I don't know why, I just, I didn't. And I made this one very long, so it's tunic length, so I can wear it with leggings. I can belt it or not, I can wear something under it. Right now I just, since I'm doing costume changes, I just, I threw it on over nothing. Um, well, not nothing. So this was really great. It washes up really well. You can throw it in the washer and dryer, it's perfect. My next Shelly Summer Top. You may have seen it on Instagram, otherwise, I am going to change yet again and I will show you the Shelly Summer Top, which I really love this version that I'm going to show you. I just, I love the way the yarn and oh, it's so fabulous. <laughs> my third version but I have as I said I didn't complete the second version I'm still waiting for the yarn but this is my third version and I'm being a little less ris risque today I will insert some pictures that I took when I made the video my FO uh, dance video for this top so you can see that I wore a, a little like bralette cami underneath it and so you can see your midriff in that at 60 and I'm still showing off my mid. Isn't that crazy? I'll show off my midriff, well, through lace work on a knit piece, but I don't want to show off my chicken arms. That's, and I don't want to show my chicken arms. That's a little wacky, right? Oh, well. This garment, I used two yarns held together as I am wont to do. I'm always holding two yarns together. You guys know what? You know when you talk about trending and now the trend is holding mohair with everything? I have been doing that for, I don't know, eight years at least. So does that mean that I'm a trendsetter? Although no one knew about it because I, I wasn't on Instagram back then or any social media. This top I made with Blue Heron yarns. This, the color is called Deep Blue Sea, which is actually 
Remember this, it's sort of these colors, this blue and green. It's a similar in the similar family. You guys, I'm just knit, that's all I'm knitting with lately, my whole wardrobe. Well, at least I don't have to think about, you know, which colors to mix and match if I stay, if I stay with my blues and teals. Okay, so this blue heron yarn, I bought this yarn ah, years ago, several years ago, at my very first Vogue Knitting Live here in Pasadena, maybe four or five years ago, and four years ago, something like that. Anyway, I, I, they had a, um, a booth there, and I love the yarn. It was so beautiful, or is so beautiful. And this one is a cotton rayon twist. It's called There Are a Thousand Yards. Oh, which reminds me, I don't think... So I've made two garments, and I still have yarn left over. I don't have enough to make another garment, but I... So I was able to make two sleeveless garments. One is sort of tunic length, not quite, but longer, or hip length and this one, and I had plenty. For those of you that have not jumped on the Shelly Summer Top Cal bandwagon, you might want to consider it. It's super easy. Oh, and Crochet Luna, since, hi honey, Claudia of Crochet Luna is really digging in to knitting, and so Claudia, this would actually be another great knitting project for you after you finish My Boy Lollipop. This is super easy. It's easy to memorize. Uh, the repeats are easy to memorize. And it's a super fast knit. Two rectangles, you sew it up, and it, it's like fabulous. Back to this. So I used blue heron yarns, and I held it together with, oh, a Juniper Moon Farm Findlay in the colorweight Mermaid. It's kind of a bluish green. And I used it because this rayon cotton you know, I love the yarn, but I have to say it splits easily, and I found that annoying. And I guess because it's a twist, it's not fine. It, um, it is not tightly plied, and so that was a little frustrating because at times, you know, it's poking through, and then I've got like a little gap. And so I have, you know, I've snagged it a few times already because of jewelry and bracelets. But I have to say, I do love the yarn. I love the sheen to it, which is really great. And, I, and the pattern, of course, you know, Nancy does a great job on beautiful, feminine, easy patterns. That, you know, they're, they're quick to knit up. They're beautiful. They're, they have this beautiful touch. And, and they're, they're simple, you know, and, and elegant. And so, you guys, if you haven't checked it out, do check it out. As I always do, and I'm, I listen now on a lot of a lot of podcasters. I am finding are starting and designers too. I don't know why. I've been doing this for years, almost since I started knitting, which was in 2009 or 10. I started knitting, self-taught, and I always finished with a crochet slip stitch around all my hems, my necklines, and my sleeves. Even when there are when even when there is ribbing, I slip stitch crochet around everything to help reinforce all the hems and edges. I've always done it. Sometimes I will use crochet around either a sleeve hem or even a sleeve, you know, a short sleeve. And I might do, you know, a row or two of single crochet, which I think you Brits call a double crochet. And, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, then I might do a shell stitch or something just to have a little lacy work. And, and that too is very pretty. So if you, if you do have experience with simple crochet, and that's all I have, simple crochet. I, I, I can't even read a crochet pattern. I have a couple. I really want to knit. There is... God, uh, there's a shawl by Rachel. I'll put her name below. I, it, I can't think of it offhand. She was interviewed on Christy Glass, and her shawls were so beautiful. And they have sort of a knitted look, but they're crochet. And I can't figure out the pattern, so I, I have to learn how to read crochet patterns better. And uh, that's what I need Crochet Luna for. She has to sit with me and help me. So I've noticed that more and more knitters and possibly designers are using the slip stitch crochet around their uh, hems, which is interesting. So I don't know, 
I'd like to... <laughs> I'd like to fancy myself that, you know, maybe I started something. Is that my theme for today, that I started? So I'm a trendsetter. I highly doubt it. Great. I know a lot of makers might find it tedious to do the slip stitch crochet around your necklines and around your sleeves and around your hands, but trust me, it is well worth it. Your garments will not uh, lose their shape, and that is why I do it. Plus, that, that edging gives every garment that I make uh, a more finished look. It looks more professional. It, I, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but it, it just has a nicer, it, it looks finished. Yeah. That is the Shelly Summer Top by Nancy with Getting Curly with it. And what else can we talk about? So I, oh, I can show you, I can show you the other one. Oh. I just love these colors. This is Absalom colorway. And I'm so excited about this one. And so, I think I can knit it up in one day, the other piece. This garment took me two days. Two days. That is the great thing about these Shelly summer tops. You can like crank them out. And so it is so great for instant, uh, instant gratification. And I'm very excited to get my next skein of Asylum Fibers so that I can complete this Shelly summer top. Oh, I was watching Chevy Rail recently Many of you probably follow her already, and I have a degree in history, and so I'm always excited when I hear something about history. And Chevy Rell has some old letters from a great, great, I think it's two greats, grandfather, who was in World War I, and she read some of them on her podcast. It was just so fascinating listening to the letter and learning about what this young person was doing during his tour of duty. So I hope that... Chevy Rell will read a few more of those letters because I for one found them really great. So aside from my top secret test knit for Corrado Lark, I am working on, you guys you may or may not remember, I showed this many months ago. I, and you know what, I'm gonna have to put the yarn names below. I'm, and I'm doing a 3x3 three three ribbing and then just stockinette <clears throat> and the sleeves too, they'll be the same thing. And this, as I had mentioned before, the reason on this garment, the cityscape, that I wanted to try the I cord, attached I cord edging, is because I'm thinking about doing that to this garment, that I would like an I cord edging here, but I'm not sure yet. Maybe I will do the ribbing. It depends how deep I want the neckline. I'll figure that out as I go. Uh, so that is my own personal design work, if we can call it that. I know some of you have been so kind. You say to you, you write in the note, uh, you write in the comment section that you know if you're designing it, if you're doing it without a pattern, it you are designing. Well, trust me, this, this is so mindless designing it hardly qualifies as design work when I look at all the beautiful things that real you know that real hand knitwear and crochet designers put out oh my gosh I just I, I can't touch that you guys haven't seen little Lucy Lou in a while so here she is she had a bath yesterday she doesn't like her bath so the groomer comes to give her and the big Doberman of their bath and she had so many what we call gummy bears. They get such muckies around her eyes that they had to cut her, the woman had to cut her kind of short today. But this is little Lucy Lou with her little Barba Blanca. Yes, my little girl with your Barba Blanca. Yes, honey. Where's your brother Maxwell? Say hi to everybody, Lucy. Say hi. Oh, mama's, mama's girl. Who's mama's girl? Hugs, hugs. I taught her to give hugs. Let's see if she'll do it. Wanna give hugs, hugs, hug, hug? Oh, what a big, oh, what a big girl. You can give mommy a hug, hug. Besos, dame besos. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, you guys. Have a great day. Bye.